We don't play the social game. We are social. Power 98.5. Hi, this is Dan Aykroyd. He's progressive. He's beautiful. He's thoughtful. He's intelligent. He's powerful. He's positive. He is Stephen Quoco on Power 98.5 Satellite Radio. Empowering listeners from the US to the UK. Live on air with Stephen Quoco. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. No matter where you're at in the world, you are live on air with Stephen Quoco on Power 98.5 Satellite Radio. We've been looking forward to this. This has been a long time coming, and I want to thank all of my listeners, especially out in the UK, for uh, being patient. Uh, you guys know it. We've got the one, the only, the legend, the champion. I know people say that a lot, but listen, this is the first time on record I'm having an incredible person and a human being such as Ray Sefo. He is a New Zealand fight 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 promoter excuse me tongue twister <laughs> and retired kickboxer boxer and mixed martial artist of Samoan descent he's a Las Vegas resident I'm happy to say that I'm here in Las Vegas with him uh, and we've got a lot to talk about this isn't going to be your normal conversation uh, this is going to be all about Ray what he's doing in a PFL uh, remembering where he started, uh, it was he was five years old when he was given his first pair of boxing gloves. And there's more to that. And we're going to find out from him direct. Ray, thank you for being here and live on air with Stephen Cuoco. Uh, thanks for having me, Stephen. I appreciate it. You're welcome. I had a little bit of a tongue twister this morning, but no worries, <laughs> no problem. <laughs> We've uh, we've been preparing up for this, and I want to thank you so much for taking time out of your busy day to be here with us. You've accomplished a lot in your 52 years, and I mean a lot to where I don't know if right. Wikipedia can add all of it. Um, yeah, no, I've been very fortunate, and, um, you know, I thank the good Lord every day that um, I'm blessed with the opportunities and the life that he's given me. And so um, the best I can do with that is, you know, as the journey continues is to give back to either fighters or whoever uh, that needs that kind of blessing as well. So I'm very thankful that uh, I sit where I sit and, um, but the journey still continues. And so uh, thank you for having me and thank you for being patient this morning. You're welcome. It goes back to the earlier conversation that we had to where it's really about what you're doing in the world of PFL, of sports, as someone who's conditioned, seasoned, you're very grounded. Uh, you, you appear to me and seem like someone who's very visual, that you observe things, uh, not just because you train and coach, but overall and all, I feel that you're someone that is intuitive and you're aware and if I may say, not to speak for you, one of the strongest things that comes to me and touches my heart, and, and for the time that we've been connected, which has been quite a while, especially on social media, is that there is a greater understanding and compassion that seems to fill who you are in wanting to do what's right, what's best, but most importantly, to hold accountability to take right. and to be aware of the decisions that a person is making in life. How do you feel for me saying that to you? Uh, you're absolutely right. Um, you know, obviously that also comes from my parents. Um, it's just doing the right thing. You know what I mean? And uh, just something as simple as that, doing the right thing. And, all, and that applies to everything in life, into business, into your personal life, uh, to the world. You're absolutely right. So, yeah, it's at the end of the day, it's, it's just doing the right thing by the people you work with, by the people uh, that you love, um, by the people that are your acquaintance with. And so, you know, uh, when you do that kind of stuff, uh, life continues to bless you, but at the same time, 
everybody understands where they belong and how that relationship continues to move forward, right? Absolutely. And being that you're you're conditioned as someone who does promotion, you've you're, you've got a background in kickboxing, mixed martial arts, but most importantly, as the president of PFL, what are the fundamentals? Here's the biggest thing that my listeners would want to know, and and I would like for you to to educate me on, uh, even with knowing some of your fighters already personally, having had known them for quite some time, a couple for several years. What are the fundamentals that you look for, not only in a fighter, but in a person, in a human being, what makes a great and exceptional athlete of the PFL? Um, you know, uh, obviously, first and foremost, the person has to have uh, the talent to, to be able to compete at the highest level. Uh, and obviously, that's the goal for any fighter uh, that, or any person that wants to uh, step into this kind of world, um, whether it's boxing, kickboxing, MMA. Um, you got to have the talent. You got to have the skills to kind of uh, compete um, and continue to grow. Uh, obviously, uh, with that being said, the person's character is also very important. Because for me, um, I tell people all the time, what you see is what you get with me. Um, there's no hidden hidden agendas or anything that, or anything like that. So um, it's uh, it's just you know being a good person, doing the right things, living uh, that can inspire people, and so. Um, again, it goes back to just doing the right thing, right? And so um, I look at these things and you'll find that every fighter that, that brings that kind of uh, qualities to the game, uh, they last longer in the game. Not only that uh, people would um, want to surround themselves with them, uh, to work with them, they get more opportunities in terms of sponsorship. So yeah, it's, it's, it all comes down to those basic fundamentals of being a good person. When we think about and consider <clears throat> networking, relationships, community, right. it's something I look forward to building a relationship on even more with your permission uh, and with the PFL because it is so different from when we think of boxing and bare knuckle and a lot of other, uh, you know, components and foundations that are happening out there in a world of where viewers and fans and families can be more involved in, especially fighters of where to go. This isn't to sound promotional because that's not why Ray's here. And just so, and thank you, Colleen, for the message. Uh, uh, we are sitting down. I've got Ray Cepho here. He is the president of PFL. Uh, he's also a retired kickboxer, boxer, and mixed martial artist. And uh, he resides here in Las Vegas, Nevada. And we're looking to get a, a better perspective, clarity about PFL and the goals direct from Ray himself. And uh, I want to thank you for the question. Uh, to go back uh, of what I was about to ask you, Ray, is networking, collaboration. There are some, I would say, institutions or um, businesses that don't really like when there are more interpersonal relationships that are happening um, on the scenes or behind the scenes. When we think about whether it be my listeners, people who are going to hear this interview in the future, but also from someone or, or someone like myself and other people that come from the world of reality television, film, fashion, design. What would we have to look forward to when it comes to collaboration and networking to be more involved in the PFL with the fighters? And then also the fact of it is, is journalists, independent journalists like myself who are not 
with Washington, what is it, uh, Forbes or Wall Street Journal or someone, what do we have to look forward to to know where we stand, what we can do, and what you would expect from us to do what's right as journalists and people in the media for your fighters and the PFL? Um, <laughs> that's a good question. I mean, I think the bottom line is um, is telling the story of the individual fighters uh, and their journeys, uh, but also uh, is to be true to the story, uh, to be true to the uh, individual fighter uh, or the whoever that um, is giving giving you uh, giving the media the permission to be able to tell their story um, and. You know, the great thing about the PFL is that is their journeys, uh, I mean, you have to follow their journeys because of the way the, the regular season, the playoffs, and the championship happens. And, the, you know, and we all know about uh, that kind of thing, especially with sports here in the U.S. And it doesn't matter if it's basketball, football, baseball, you name it, right? That's the kind of um, uh, storylines that you look at. And so when you have... Um, so I think the media's um, I, idea or the, uh, is to tell the story that needs to be told and that also uh, makes the individual athlete happy and continue to come back, you know, uh, to uh, update the story on their journey and as they move forward. Good answer. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate most are the documentaries your company does. I've watched all, at least six or seven of them. They are very well done. I was actually surprised and impressed by the production, by the way the stories are told. The, the feel of watching something that I would see on Netflix or the Discovery Channel. Are you going to be doing more? Is your company going to be adding more of these visuals and these contexts and narratives to not only the website, but more for the fighters to get more of this Discovery Channel Netflix feel through your videos? Uh, yes, absolutely. Um, you know, it's, it's funny that um you asked that question because uh the truth the truth be told i you know i come from a martial arts background and, and like you said earlier i competed in boxing kickboxing mma and in the beginnings like my my thought process was to put on the best fights that we can put on and but as you know the, as we grow um my team have also taught me a lot of things, uh, especially with, you know, working closely with Jim, who wears a lot of different hats in the company. Um, uh, even though he, he, he's our uh, head legal person, uh, but he wears a lot of different hats. Um, and so he's taught me uh, about storytelling. And um, of course, Peter Murray's done the same also. And I was like, storytelling? And so, you know, just watching that. So the story is not just about the fight. It's about, uh, you know, their backgrounds, how they grew up, where they come from, um, you know, how uh, they come to be part of PFL, you know, how their journey as a martial artist started. So um, that actually made me go, oh, wow. You know what? It, they're absolutely right. It's about, it's not only about the fight. Obviously, that's very important. But the people also want to be connected to that person uh, through that story, uh, the, you know, the human story of it. And, uh, and so it taught me a lot. And so, yeah, absolutely. Those are things that, uh, like you said, uh, that you were impressed by watching it. And so was I. And um, looking back on it. And so uh, obviously our team works very hard and, and, and also does a great job in you know uh, telling those stories and um, and I'm you know again I'm very fortunate that the the whole PFL team um, is this massive this big family that 
all works together to bring the product uh, to the public and tell the best stories, show the best fights, and continue to grow that way. And if I may say, this isn't a plug-in. And as you get to know more of me, Ray, I'm extremely transparent and honest. You're going to always know my intentions, where I'm coming from. (laughs) I've learned that in over 30 years. As a publicist, this is where I was able to not collapse. That's not the right word. It would be where was it submerged. I was able to submerge myself completely into your platform because of these behind the scene documentary stories. What I encourage you to do and what I would love to see is once again, it goes back to what I say to and have said to many people in the world of sports. There has got to be a way where we can combine forces and networking and conversations to be able to bridge entertainment and sports to where Wall Street Journal or Forbes or, you know, Huffington Post or whoever it may be to where the people will come out and not just focus on the sport aspect, but to focus on the story. And what I see is something here. And if it hasn't been told to you before, my whole point from a PR media perspective is I would like for you guys to take either the best of the best or to possibly take three different fighters and sort out how in succinct are these fighters, not only from their background and with their passion, Ray, for doing what they do and what they love to do from training to eating to families to to paying their bills, but where is where are the accomplishments? Where are the heartaches? Where are the triumphs that three of the athletes, and you can create a series from this, where do they share common ground? And where can they teach and learn from each other? And then do a mini West Coast uh, film festival. You know, South by Southwest, Santa Fe Independent Film Festival. We've got film festivals here in in Nevada. You know, you got California, you got Washington State. That is something I would like to see. I would love for you and your company for PFL to take a minimum of three fighters. It's not too little. It's not too many from three different walks of life. And for all of them in their B-roll and in the, in the Q&As and everything to find out where's the common ground, but where can they learn from each other's story? And once again, create a series from that. Look at a network, maybe Showtime, maybe Netflix, maybe HBO Max, or pick it up. But that's what I see is missing. That's where what I love to do is to find out what's working And how can you make it better and greater? But more importantly, where can you capture a larger audience, but a larger audience that is not just in one sector of sports, but where you can expand these stories and the fighters and where PFL and everyone can win. And the only way to do that is you've got to have television. And you've got to have film. You've got to have something to where people can come and be able to relate to people that they're buying tickets to see and and wondering who and why are they there to root for them to win. I hope that helps. And it's something I've, I've been wanting to tell you for quite some time now, ever since I've been hooked by watching these stories. No, it, it makes sense. Uh, everything you just said, yeah, hundred percent, it makes sense. And um, I know that <clears throat> some of my, some of our uh, team have been um, throwing those ideas around. Um, but it, you know, uh, it most definitely um, helps not only in the growth of of these fighters, but at the same time. Uh, the the growth of pfl and so yeah i 100 percent agree with you um that those stories also need that those stories need to be told but um put a spin to it as well and like you said it's uh it's seeing where 
uh, the the three individual fighters, and they could be from different weight classes, obviously, and um, see where they can help each other to learn or to pick up certain things that uh, can help within their training and and so on, whether it's to do with meditation or to do with um, self healing and or whatever. So. Um, yeah, no, I, I like that, and and I will most definitely pass that on. Speaking of classes, you your company has six. Will you be expanding more divisions within PFL? Yes, there is. Uh, you know, there's been talks about it this past uh, three month, three four months, uh, and. We haven't finalized that yet. Those are still ongoing discussions. Uh, obviously, for us, it's, um, we're quite busy with PFL Europe, um, now sorting out PFL MENA, which covers the whole of the Middle East, PFL Africa, Oceania, Asia. So, uh, yes, that is uh, definitely um, something that, uh, um, you know, is being talked about it and, and, and most likely, uh, so, uh, so that you know your uh, audience understands. So in Europe, PFL Europe, we have a 135 division. Um, but in terms of the PFL Global, that's we don't have that yet. We have a, one, a 45, 155, 170, uh, 205, um, uh, 145 division for the women and our heavyweights. So we have six divisions, uh, like you said. But there are discussions in regards to, uh, you know, uh, adding two more divisions to to the season. If I may ask, any fighter, anyone that's listening and will listen to this interview, any woman, any man that is looking for a platform to build a business, to make money, to be a great representative for themselves and for the organization that they're part of. My question for you, Ray, is what sort of fighter are you looking for and what sort of credentials or criteria do they need to meet in order to become a professional fighter with P PFL? So there's two parts to that. Uh, the PFL Global, uh, you have to have 10 plus fights professionally and obviously um, you have to be competing uh, with a high level um, stage of your career if you will um, for example uh, I've had people send me their records and it's like 15 and 2 right but all of their opponents are O and O uh four and 16 um you know five and one so you could have more than than 10 fights but i also kind of look at the quality of the fighters that you're competing with because um when you when you're stepping into pfl global uh, into the season uh, you're playing high level guys and so uh myself as not only uh, a former fighter, I got to look at, um, I don't want anybody getting hurt uh, or badly hurt, obviously, you know, as Mike Thompson would say, we're in the hurt business. But at the same time, I don't want somebody that goes in there against a high level guy and just keep completely uh, washed out. You know what I mean? So um, to go back to your question, yes, you got to have 10 plus fights. Uh, you got to be fighting at uh, at a reasonable level. And um, you also got to, you know, bring your A game in terms of your um, skills because you got to be able to strike. Because nowadays, everybody knows how to defend a takedown. Everybody knows how to wrestle. Everybody knows how to uh, submit somebody. Uh, everybody knows how to strike. Um, but uh, as we say uh, in the in the fight world, there's limits to the game, right? And so, um, to every fighter, understand where you're at uh, in terms of those limits and um, before you, you know, your manager sends your application in. And, and if you feel like you could step up and compete with the best, yeah, absolutely. Um, everybody's welcome. 
with that answer, there's something that I would like to read to you. Uh, this was in one of your, um, doesn't really give me a date. This was with, um, rnz.co.nz it was with Tele Anderson. Uh, it says, quote, I remember at the age of seven, I think I was, my dad had rented a Bruce Lee movie and a Jackie Chan movie. One was Fist of Fury and a Jackie Chan movie was Drunken Master. I was so fascinated by what was happening, you know, they, they were able to use their bodies, their legs, their elbows, their head. Like everything just looks so coordinated and being a seven-year-old, it just blew my mind. When I think about this interview and you and the PFL and all of the extraordinary things you've accomplished in your life, being 52 years young, you still look incredible, you're timeless, you're articulate, and you're respected. How do you feel about who you are as a person and as a man, Ray? How do you feel about your life of what you've accomplished? And how much are you looking forward to accomplishing even more? Um, that's a great question. How do I feel? Um, like I said in the beginning of this, um, I thank the good Lord every day. Um, as soon as I open my eyes, I thank the good Lord for allowing me to wake up to another day. I ask the good Lord for his blessings and protection over myself, my kids, my family, friends, and everybody that believes in God. Throughout the day, <clears throat> and it, you know, it doesn't matter what I'm doing. Uh, I could be driving, I get to, you know, just thank the good Lord again for just everything in my life. I, you know, and I always go back to uh, Denzel Washington's um, speech. I heard this speech and he said, put God first in your life. Uh, now, God had been in my life, but the, the reason why I bring his speech up is because everything that he said, I 100 billion percent understand what he was saying, but I also understood where uh, that's happened for me too, uh, where he says, um, I've been everywhere, I've been I put God first, and he's been protected, he's been corrected, and um, and it's just amazing how that is so true. Um, so, again, my life is, um, yeah, nothing is perfect, right? None, none of us are perfect, but we do the best we can to try and live by, what I said earlier, is by doing the right thing. And uh, not only by your, you know, uh, with the people that you love, the people you come across, the people that you work with, uh, it's all about doing the right thing. And and so um, I'm very, very grateful, uh, appreciative, and um, blessed. And so um, I'm humbled by the love and support that I've gotten from uh, the world of martial arts, the fans of the martial arts world, um, the fighters, the coaches. Uh, so I'm, you know, uh, I have nothing but to be grateful for. Uh, uh, or should I say, I have nothing um, to be upset about because life is great. And of course, um, the journey continues, right? And so, we continue to learn every day. We continue to grow, and um, and the biggest thing is is making sure that we do the right things to, so that our young ones can be inspired uh, to continue to be able to go on their own individual journeys and inspire more people, uh, and you know continue to grow uh, goodness and uh, righteousness throughout throughout life. You know. Um, and that's really, you know, that's really the goal is to continue to uh, grow for yourself, but at the same time, uh, inspire your little ones uh, and inspire people to 
um, become better people or to continue to uh, elevate in whatever they do in life. I appreciate that answer. And as also someone who is of faith, I want to thank you for giving me hope and filling me with inspiration, knowing that no matter what a person's beliefs may be, I have heard in in, enter, in the world of entertainment, in the world of sports, and other areas, even in regular business growing up, that God doesn't belong in sports. God doesn't belong in entertainment. God doesn't belong in whatever it may be because businesses want business to be business. Certain organizations want the main focus to be all about sponsorships and advertisements. Even in the world of media, it, it, right. it, it, they, they don't want to hear. They don't mind if you what you believe in, but they don't want to hear it. They don't want it promoted. If I may ask you, to any person of faith or anyone that you can relate to in, in what you believe in, God, Jesus, the Holy Spirit, the Trinity, all the above, what would you have to say to that person, Ray, to stay focused no matter what industry, what career, what business, what organization they're in? Would you like to share something or, or in these final closing thoughts to someone who wants to be able to shout from the rooftops how grateful they are for the gifts and the blessings they received, even to use the term God and Jesus. Do you have anything that you would like to share on that for a person to stay faithful, to stay focused, and to continue to shout from the rooftops and express who they are of what has moved and inspired their heart and soul. Yeah, um, I say continue to believe and have faith uh, in God, in yourself. Um, and it doesn't matter what religion, what color you are, where you're from, be true to yourself, and most importantly, be true to your Heavenly Father, because uh, we all know that any person of faith understands that we wouldn't be here without the Heavenly Father, and that we continue this journey uh, understanding that God is the Almighty, and that uh, don't let anybody uh, deter you from believing in your faith and believing in God, uh, because at, you know, at the end of the day, um, you'll continue to inspire many people from around the world uh because like i said it doesn't matter doesn't matter what religion you are what color you are uh what you know um you believe in and just be true to yourself and you know make sure you get to thank the good lord every day ray thank you for being with us today and would you like to give a shout out to anyone um yeah my shout out is to my team at pfl i mean i'm very fortunate to have such amazing people to work with and so uh and and when i say that not just our staff but also all our fighters that fight for the pfl from around the world so a big shout out to the pfl team uh thank you for putting in the work and steve steven thank you for having me and uh this was an amazing uh, interview so i appreciate it i hope you will be willing to come back on again. Uh, absolutely. That's, that's without a doubt. So thank you. <laughs> You're very welcome. Ray, just hold the line real quick. We're going to close out and thank you for being with us today. Yep. Thank you to everyone for joining live on air with Stephen Quilk on power 98.5. We will re air this episode throughout the month. So definitely whether you're listening on the iOS or Android app or on the website, power985.com. Check the schedule, whatever time zone you're in. And uh, we look forward to, you know, sharing your thoughts. You know, definitely click that instant messenger in the bottom right-hand corner, uh, whether it be on the app or the website. And we look forward to hearing from you. Thank you to everyone who's joined us today on the live. And uh, 
great conversation with Mr. Ray Seffo from PFL, the president, uh, extraordinary man, and you heard him direct. No matter what you believe in and, and what walk of life you come from, don't let anyone put a shadow on your light, on your spirit, on your soul, and not even on who you are as a person. Because one of the best things my mother who adopted me said, God does not make mistakes. And remember, you were not a mistake. You are not a mistake. Have a great day, everyone.